Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jules, from Knowledge Highway, uh, the only person from Knowledge Highway, uh, I'm doing another HTML tutorial, and this time it's part number seven, and we're gonna learn a couple of things that may seem slightly less interesting, one more interesting than the other. Um, today, just... Okay, let's go over them right now. Why am I even talking like we're gonna find out later? It's not like a game show. Uh, <laughs> so first thing we're gonna learn is about how to give our pages a title, uh, which is basically like the bit at the top of the page where it's like it's got Mozilla Firefox in the window name, but before that it's got something like Google or whatever. So I'll, I'll show you so you'll understand better when I show you. Uh, the other thing we're going to learn about is inline elements and block elements and the difference between them. This is kind of more of a theory bit for now until we get onto uh, CSS when we will go in depth. The only reason why I'm teaching you right now is because it's part of HTML and I'm going to separate the HTML and CSS tutorials out so they're completely separate. So you can just go through the HTML if you only ever want to learn HTML and I'll take you through the majority of things. We're actually a long way through it now. We're, we're coming towards the end of HTML. Um, also, if I get time or if I remember, I will toss in the font tag, which is another little bit of formatting that I failed to mention last time, but I suppose it should be uh, addressed. So let's get going. Let's get started. Let's open up our index.html that we've been working from for the last few times and get in those usual prerequisite bits. So, um, oh my goodness, duct type and HTML. So that tag tells the browser that this is a HTML file, if you were remembering, and this tells us that this is where the HTML tag is gonna, HTML is gonna go, sorry. And next we're gonna make a body uh, element by opening and closing a body tag. In here, I'm just gonna literally write a heading that's like, this is a web page. Amazing. So. It's just for so you have something to look at. So, this is all stuff we covered before. Uh, you should all know what all this does. But, you may have heard me mention something called a heading head tag um, uh, in the last few episodes over the course of these tutorials. Now, we've gone over the body tag and what the body tag does, which is basically the body element holds all the bits of pieces that the person that is viewing the web page will see. Whereas there is another tag called the head tag or head element and it contains all the extra information about the web page that the user doesn't directly see. So body holds things like content, like all the text that you'll see on the web page and all the images and stuff. And then the head will hold all the information about extra things like the title of the web page and adds things like meta tags, which we'll speak about another time as well. All sorts of fun things. So let's get started. Let's add that head tag. So above your body, this is weird for anyone that has been keeping along. It's kind of weird to go outside the body tag, uh, but we're doing it. So head, and we're going to close the head element with a closing tag of head. And within here, we're going to specify what the title of our web page should be because this is not really a bit of content. This is this is specifying a element of the web page that is not visible to the user. Yeah. So <laughs> let's go. Title is the name of our tag. We're going to close it with a slash title and this is now our title element. And in our title element, we're going to write the name of our web page. So let's call this web page Hello world, because I'm really unoriginal. So I'm just putting the work text hello world between my title tags as we have done with many other types of tags. And um, in this case, when we save it and then we run up what we have made so far, we get, well, first of all, we get this, the heading that we wrote in, but also we get hello world at the top of the window. Beautiful, it's also in the tag. Now. Another thing that you will notice, if you try and bookmark this page now, instead of coming up with something like index.htm or whatever, the name for the bookmark will actually be hello world. 
So this is not really so much of a thing that matters in terms of the person using your web page, but it is something that make, will make your web page seem far more professional. For example, uh, Google does this by using Google as the title of their web page. And as you can see, it appears in both the tab and the top here, which is just fantastic. So that's really the extent of the title tag or element. Uh, that's all it does. It changes the bit at the top of the window or the name of the overall name of your web page. Fun fun. And that resides within your head tags or in the head element, uh, which contains all the extra information about your web page. So with that established, let's talk some theory. Yay. So this is stuff that you do not need to know especially not right now. You'll probably need to know it in CSS, but I'll probably go over it again in CSS later on. So if you're not interested in knowing some extra stuff that you don't really need to know, uh, then you can go ahead and skip over this tutorial now. Uh, that's all we're going to learn in terms of cool new stuff. Um, but for those of you that want to know the difference between an inline element and a block element, here we go. Let's start really simple and say that basically the way that block elements work is, well, block elements are usually elements that cause a new line to be taken. For example, a heading tag. If you add, say, a paragraph tag below your heading tag, so this is a paragraph, close that tag, so that's a paragraph element, and then you load up your web page, boom, you'll see that it is taking a new line. And as we spoke about before, oops, um, like uh, the HTML is not just gonna take a new line because you press the enter button. So let's enter some text outside of a tag. Now, if you didn't know, you can in fact do this. You can say, this is some text. And then you can be like, okay, I'll take another line. This is some more text. Awfully typed out, I must say, without any punctuation apart from at the end and also two capital letters. But that is in fact two bits of text and there is a line break between them. However, if you save it, there is no space. There is no new line. Well, that's how HTML works. And that is why this is described as a block element because it takes a new line between the tags. P is also a block element. Uh, table is a block element. UL, unordered list, is an element, block element. Any set of tags that after them will cause the page to take a new line is a block element or any element <laughs> that causes a new line to be taken is a block element. And as you, again, as you can see, uh, under the paragraph tag, a new line has been taken as the paragraph line tag is a block element. But we have not specified a BR tag. Oh geez, what have I done? Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, can I load that back up? Oh. The, the funny things that happen during tutorials. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that little distraction. Anyway, so if we run that now, now there is a break in there is what I was trying to get at. So now we know what a block element is. What's an inline element? Well, it's kind of as the name suggests, it's an element that stays in line or does it's does not take a new line. So it's the opposite of a block tag, uh, a block element, sorry. Uh, so examples of block elements. Well, let's save that again and show you that now this is indeed all on one line. Well, what if we were to make this text bold using the bold tags? Save it and then go. Well, bold is an inline element. So no new line is taken after the bold tag, as you can see. So this is still all on one line. Other examples of this would be, for example, the image tag. So let's see if we can get that image of our cat from earlier. Oh, I should really not do that. Uh, let's add the image tag here. And oops, adding the source attribute, src equals, quota in the quotation marks, I'm gonna type images slash cats slash cat 
app.png. This is from a way earlier tutorial if you're joining me later on, so this will not make much sense, but oh well. Uh, image is another inline element, as you will see as I refresh, and everything is still on the same line. Granted, it looks really strange because the image is huge, and uh, but in fact, no new lines have been taken between this is some text and the image tag and the text afterwards. There are no line breaks whatsoever. So image is an inline element. Other elements as well that are inline, such as link tags, which are A and italics and all most of the formatting stuff is that way. So there you go. That is the difference between inline and element tags. Uh, I did say I'd go over the font tags, but I'm actually going to do that next time because I've already said that people can go away if they don't want to learn the theory, so that was a bit of a mistake on my end, but ah well. So next time we will do the font tag and we'll move on to something else fantastic. So thanks for watching guys and see you